Hi, Alex and Felix. Can you please uh, say something that we ensure we can hear you this in the is, room? This is Alex. Can you hear me? We can. Hey, Felix, yeah. Great. Perfect. So, yeah, please, please go ahead. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, sorry for the slight delay. Um, and we're so glad to have you in the room. Um, we saw there are a few people in there, and I, I hope uh, you enjoy our presentation. Um, I'm Alex Stenson. I'm a lead program strategist at the Wikimedia Foundation, and I'm coming to you from Uruguay, where we are having thunderstorms in the middle of the night. And over to you, Felix. Hello, everybody. My name is Felix Nati, and I am a senior program officer with the campaign team and community growth at the Wikimedia Foundation. I am coming from, I'm coming um, to you from Singapore. So I'm right here in Singapore. <laughs> And uh, we're so glad to be able to share some lessons that we have from the Organizer Lab, which was an experimental program we, we ran this last year. Um, we're, we're both on the campaigns team at the Wikimedia Foundation, and we've been asking ourselves, like, what is the thing that is most useful for us to do uh, beyond one-on-one -on -one advising and writing like documentation and supporting specific projects? And uh, this last year we tried something, which was a class. Uh, we called it the Organizer Lab. And we wanted to share with you some lessons from that. So I'm gonna let Felix start uh, a little bit with the background on the, the lab. And then we'll talk a little bit more about the specifics. And at the end, we'd like you to give us some feedback. Um, I'm gonna find my way into Bentley so that you can also leave stuff in the chat or you can talk in the room. So right. Feels. Yeah. Thank you very much, Alex. And uh, thank you for everybody joining our session today. We're very excited, like Alex said, um, to share some of the early um, lessons from this project. Um, just to give you a little bit of a background and to add to what Alex said. Um, over the years, the campaigns team has been supporting movement organizers in organizing campaigns across the movement. And um, we have been doing this on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Uh, it's been very difficult over the years. So we were thinking of an opportunity to scale and an opportunity to train people to move from being local organizers to global organizers that could organize campaigns within the movement. And the Organizer Lab was the thing that came to mind. Now, I think somewhere around last year, around this time, you would have heard an announcement for the Organizer Lab. So we ran the first iteration of the project. Um, it was a beta version, most likely an opportunity to experiment and to learn. And um, we did that successfully um, from last year to mid of this year. And we are here to share the results of what we've learned. Um, next slide, Alex. So why did we run the Organizer Lab? Um, we were at a time where we wanted to do very, um, we wanted to do more with little. Um, the team had been doing, like I did say earlier on, training people and coaching people and providing documentation that help people run campaigns one on one. Um, and we thought it was opportune. Um, as at the time when the movement strategy was also prioritizing uh, the list of um, things to do. And I think um, these were the two things that sort of like inspired us and motivated us to really think outside the box and to do something that would help organizers within the movement. So we we based the organizer lab solely on this um two prioritized areas, which was invest in skills and leadership development and identify topics for impact. As you may have noticed over the years, um, topic for impact organizing has become a, th a thing. You you would have heard of the gender uh, organizing, you would have heard of um activities like the gender gap. You would have also heard of activities like Wiki for Human Rights. And these are all targeted at certain topical areas that were of global concern. And so for us, it was very right that the movement strategy was moving in that direction. And we pivoted on these two to actually create the Organizer Lab. Next slide. So the kinds of people that we were looking out for for the organizer lab were people that were local organizers, people that had experience to, in, in organizing some kind of event who wanted to organize beyond just um, their local parlance and wanted to do something beyond the shores of their countries. And so we looked out for medium experience organizers and um, they were the uh, main target for 
um, our first um, cohort, uh, but we did also bring in some newbie organizers who had had some level of experiencing and and also experiencing around organizing and also some um, level of understanding of how the Wikimedia ecosystem worked based on like their editing background and also being in the movement for a while. So these are the mixture of people that we actually took in the course. The hopes was that we would be able to upskill these people to be able to organize campaigns that um, reached um, the masses within the Wikimedia movement. Next slide. So we took these people in into a program um, that was 10 week and was very intensive. It was, I think it was week on week. And that, that was one of the things that we got from people that it was very packed, right? But it was packed because there was a lot to share also with these people. And so uh, we ran a 10 week intensive um, um, course with them focused on uh, climate and sustainability for the first iteration. And um, there were five li live sessions that happened. And these live sessions were sessions that we actually brought subject matter experts to speak to um, court participants to learn beyond just the content that we're reading, but to also have practical sense of what was um, being taught through the um, course and the documents that they were reading. We also had um, this um, um, organizer lab hinged on what we all know how to do best as Wikimedians, which was peer-to-peer -peer counseling and support. Uh, so we, we pivoted the program um, format around this so that people will still have that similar experience within the organizer lab. And so there was that peer-to-peer -peer learning uh, paired with direct feedback. So people being able to give feedback to their own colleagues in the course. And then we also being able to interact and give feedback on how they were doing in the course was very important. And that's one of the formats that we adopted for this. In the first iteration of this, we ran this in only in English. Uh, we did so because that, at the time, this was what our, our capacity could take. But um, uh, we have been thinking about opportunities to upskill this. And I think we'll talk more about this as we go forward. So next slide. I think this is an Alex slide. Alex, over to you. So as we've been observing uh, throughout our campaign organizing uh, experience, there were a, a few particular sets of skills that organize when we did one-on-one -on -one mentoring with organizers to say run campaigns or do a partnership, we often had to work with uh, uh, to kind of hone and refine um, and kind of teach in these one-on-one -on -one settings. And we wanted to make this into something that anyone to learn from and really benefit from. And these three kind of broad areas of work are identifying topics for impact, uh, designing creative audience-based events and campaigns, and making the best use of what the Wikimedia movement has to offer um, in order to run these activities. I'll go into a little bit more detail what those things included, but just think now in your experience as say organizers and local affiliates or communities, you often have the people who are very good at running local events and they're learning a lot of things. They're learning how to edit, they're learning how to teach editing, they know how to run events, right? But the folks who really kind of scale up and provide the meta organizing experience that the more experienced folks who tend to run big campaigns, like the International Wiki Loves campaigns, art and feminism, that kind of stuff, they're often working across context. And to do this, you have to have kind of like a, a broader sense of what's possible within the movement and also exposure to the things you can learn. And so we broke down these, these three skill areas into units that had particular skills. Um, units one and two were focused on learning what the Wikimedia movement means by knowledge gaps and topics for impact. So we have this wonderful research from the Foundi Wikimedia Foundation research team on how to describe knowledge gaps based on all of the different attempts to do that over the years. But also we examined the Wikimedia uh, movement strategy, what exactly was in focus. In unit two, we dig deeper into specific knowledge frameworks around climate change and sustainability in this cycle of the course. Um, and the tools that we can use, like pet scanning, or Wikidata query service, that kind of stuff. And uh, the, the next big segment of the course was focused on identifying the right participants and making sure that they got the right kind of event by being creative, responding to them. And you'll learn a little bit more from that when we share some, some of the experiences from organizers in the course. 
Um, we f focused on creativity because something we've been hearing and something we've been observing across grantees and partners in the movement is that like edit-a-thons are not enough. <laughs> we need to meet our audiences with something else. And we find that the folks who do the creative different activities are really thinking about who is their audience, what does the audience need, and then uh, unit five was focused on what have people done before in the movement for audiences like this. And so we use these three units to really give people time and space to creatively reflect on like, who do I actually want to contribute to Wikimedia projects? Um, what does that look like? And how can I be creative and open uh, for them to, to do this work? And the last unit was basically focused on support, right? So the final assignment for the course is writing a rapid grant or something similar to a rapid grant uh, that requires you to do all of the other things you do for grant making and community movement. But we also talk about team building, uh, finding the right measurement tools, and really being ready uh, to, to communicate your activity to the rest of the movement so that when you do communicate about it, say, apply for a grant or ask people to join you, they will understand what's involved. Um, you might be asking, like, why did we start with climate and sustainability? What was this? Why, why would you run a ban on this course? Um, we were looking for a topic, a topic for impact that was global in nature. And we had been seeing, uh, especially in the global south, communities were really responding to the Wiki for Human Rights campaign. And I think the number of uh, activities and events um, uh, that have been happening throughout the last couple of movement uh, years and in, you'll see in this conference, there's a lot of sessions on this, these topics. Um, we we wanted to focus on that. We knew it was a topic with a lot of complexity. People were not running very diverse events around it. And we didn't want to uh, kind of intervene on a topic for impact that had too developed of a community because we wanted, if we're going to do other topics for impact, we want to make sure there's a participatory process. And so all of these things kind of made the chance to focus on climate and sustainability possible. So I'll hand it over to Felix to talk a little bit more about the outcomes and and what what the course, like the participant cohort looked like. Great. Um, so yeah, uh, we've talked enough about like why we wanted to do this. Uh, I think it's very important to also share what actually happened out of this. And I think um, for for us, we were just testing out something and piloting to see um, the best impact that it could create. Uh, and to be honest with you, we were overwhelmed with the numbers that we got um, when the call for applications was opened. We had over 140 applicants apply for the course, uh, of which we um, accepted only 37. Um, out of the 143 that applied, uh, majority of them were Nigerians. Uh, it is needful to say that our focus uh, region for the um, first cohort was actually Sub-Saharan Africa. And we chose Sub-Saharan Africa because we could see the appetite and the readiness for organizers uh, within the region that wanted to scale up uh, to do beyond what they were currently doing um, in on the continent of Africa. So we targeted Sub-Saharan Africa and overwhelmingly we had a lot of applicants from Sub-Saharan Africa. But we did also have participation or uh, applicants coming in from other regions like Europe, North America, uh, Southeast Asia, and ASEAN, as well as Latin America. Um, 37 people um, were accepted, four dropped uh, on the way because of um, several issues, personal issues. Uh, we had 21 graduate, uh, um, graduate from the program, and then four completed majority of content um, from the program. So these people, um, the four additional people that completed the majority of the content in the program did not graduate at the time that graduation was happening, but these were people that also completed a course after the math. And so, yeah, very excited to share these stats with you. Uh, for me, the most exciting thing about the Organizer Lab is the fact that after the program, um, some 
few applied for uh, a grant, which was also attached to the program. And those that were selected for the grant or awarded a grant ran programs uh, within the MOOC. And some ran programs that pivoted on Wiki for Human Rights, others ran programs that were um, solely um, created from scratch in their communities. And from what we are seeing, um, six months after the course, organizers who completed the course are running events that produce more edits than folks without the training. Um, and we have reports that organizers are using their skills for capacity building across regional and local activities. Um, we also have seen organizers actually adopt uh, certain aspects of the course in training their own communities and training other people within the Wikimedia movement, which was something that we actually hoped for. So it's been great a journey so far. It's also been a journey full of lessons and opportunities to have actually um, revitalize whatever we are building here and to make sure that we're doing uh, something good for the movement going forward. Next slide. Next slide, please. So at this point, we're, we're going to share a few testimonies or a few um um, videos with you um, about some community folks that actually engaged in the course or were participants of the program and how this is affecting or how they're using this within their local Wikipedia spaces. Alex, I'm going to hand over to you to introduce the videos. Cool. So our first video is uh, a series of four short videos uh, from Paula in Uruguay. And she was so uh, as Felix said, we had we kind of knew going that uh, Sub-Saharan Africa was likely to be the main part of our cohort, um, but we made sure to include kind of fair in a balanced representation across those other regions as well. And so Paula was one of our participants that was selected from the the LATAM group. Um, and so here we go. Hi everyone, my name is Paula. I'm the Community Engagement Program Manager of Wikimedistas de Uruguay. I applied for the Organizer Lab because climate change is one of the topics we work on and I had never led the organization of activities around that topic before. Hi everyone, my name is Paula. I'm the Let me get to the next one real quick. Community engagement program manager. No. Yeah. I learned several things during the course. I learned strategies for selecting a topic within climate change, which has many edges. I learned how to do it within a framework that will give it consistency and validation. And I learned a way to think about what audience I want to reach and based, based on that, define what activities to carry out. Does the sound good? I like this. Hello. Can you hear the video? Oh, yeah. Okay. Good. This course allows us as a group to select a specific theme for the Wiki for Human Rights campaign in Uruguay. We chose to work on the right to clean water. In the middle of the campaign, due to a drought of more than three years and how it was managed, more than half of the population of the country was left without access to drinking water. One of the lessons that the organizers lab left me with was being able to address the issue of climate change without feeling sadness or anxiety. I really like this experience because I was able to learn about what volunteers from other regions of the world are doing, particularly in Africa. And I feel like I was part of a, of a community within the Wikimedia movement of a global community. And I get the feeling that I got the feeling that the work we were doing was, was important, that it matters. It, uh, so I'm really grateful with the organizers lab team, especially 
Euphemia, Euphemia, Alex, and Felix, and I recommend it. Uh, so if you're interested in taking this course, this organizer lab, just do it. <laughs> so bye. I hope you are having fun in Wikimania. Ciao, ciao. And I wanted to highlight too, um, uh, uh, as Paul talked about, she spent a lot of time thinking about the audience that they had in the context of Uruguay, and and especially in this moment where there's like a painful drought happening, uh, so much so that we didn't have fresh water in our pipes, um, and in this part of the world. Uh, she was able to kind of refine and think and change her perspective on how how Wikimedia can be part of that change. And part of it was building this really wonderful persona uh, as a demonstration tool. She said, I can share this uh, as part of our learning materials. And so I, if you have the slide deck, you can see like one of the learning outcomes, one of the assignments is to better understand the audience that you can address a local and relevant topic. Um, the next person to speak is Romeo, um, and he'll tell you a little bit more about what he gained from the course. Hello, everyone. My name is Romeo, and uh, I am the team leader of the Wikimedia Community User Group in South Sudan. Um, I think one of the newest countries in the world. And so I have been actively involved in promoting knowledge uh, sharing and, of course, uh, community engagement uh, through Wikimedia projects in my country in South Sudan, uh, engaging different stakeholders, the academia, uh, institutions, and, of course, uh, non-governmental and government institutions. Why did I apply for this course? Uh, so I applied for the organizer lab uh, because I saw the immense potential of organizing content campaigns uh, to be able to bridge knowledge gaps in my community. So I wanted to enhance also my skills and learn effective strategies uh, to create impact campaigns that would attract new contributors, uh, partners, and of course also supporters to the Wikimedia movement. So looking at um, a Wikimedia community South Sudan, uh, uh being very new in the country so i think i also wanted to be able uh, to be able to attract uh, different types of people but of course all these deserve skills and uh, this looked like a very viable opportunity uh, for me to be able to share my skills and uh, of course also learn really a lot uh, from which i did so which takes me to the next question which is about like what did i learn and how am i applying all that i learned in my community so um, during the organizer lab, uh, I gained valuable insights, more especially into designing successful campaigns, you know, focused on climate change and sustainability related topics. Now, uh, I learned about, you know, campaign organizing best practices, you know, what you should do before uh, getting into the campaign and, you know, how you also build connections with fellow organizers globally. Uh, we're able to connect with the different people. So, of course, that art of being able to uh, build partnerships and, of course, also build connections was something really I learned a lot, which has helped me up to now. And also being able to develop project proposals, uh, which of course is something that we are able to be tasked to do at the end. So just having that skill to be able to, you know, um, develop proposals that are um, meaningful. You know, we had a lot of support to be able to do that. And with support from mentors, they were able to allow us and help us so much to be able to develop such kind of proposals. So I've been able to apply these learnings uh, by successfully organizing um, a campaign that raised awareness about climate issues in South Sudan and, of course, encouraged also active participation uh, from our community members. Now, we are facing a very huge situation in our country, more especially as far as climate change is concerned. I think South Sudan uh, has faced one of probably the largest flood cases uh, that we have seen, though, of course, there are a lot of countries right now in Africa facing it. But uh, we have got almost half of the country in the upper north um, of South Sudan that has really, really suffered a lot uh, with immense numbers of people being displaced. And of course, um, so many people also as well um, being able to suffer issues around drought and, and hunger uh, because of the floods. So 
this looked like really an opportunity for me to do that and i organized the wiki for human rights campaign uh, which went on very successfully and we can see the results uh being very amazingly we got i think at the first time we were able to get up to 72 articles that we worked on uh, which is a very huge rise uh, before i got the skills that were i think our former article were around uh, 16 or something uh, in the campaign that we did before but now a very huge rise I and mean, meaning some of the skills i learned from the organizer lab were able to effect on uh to add an effect on also the campaign that i did uh what unique lesson uh, did i learn and i would like to share with the audience uh one unique lesson that i would like to share actually is the power of collaboration so through the organizer lab i realized that uh, involving various stakeholders which includes of course volunteers you know, local organizations and experts can significantly actually amplify the impact of a campaign. So collaborative efforts not only bring like diverse perspectives, but they also create a very stronger sense of community ownership is something that I've vividly been able to see uh, via the campaigns that I've done. Like right now, even though the Wiki for Human Rights were able to engage uh, the academia were able to engage different people but long ago i used to just think that you know all wikimedia programs can just end up by getting participants and probably implementing it and go but by the organizer lab we were able to learn the immense power of collaborations uh, which actually helped a lot uh, for me to be able to do something so what changes has this uh, experience made to you as a volunteer me as a volunteer actually uh, in my wikimedia journey this experience has been very transformative uh, for my volunteer Wikimedia journey. You know, it has not only like equipped me with practical skills to be able to organize uh, effective campaigns, but also expanded my network of like-minded peers around the world. Right now, I know Tochi, I know uh, Euphemia, you know, I know a couple of colleagues, you know, Agnes. <laughs> I know so many people um, that actually was able to know uh, from, um, uh, from, from this campaign. So I was able to network with a lot of people. So the knowledge I also gained and the connections I met uh, have energized me personally to be able to take on more leadership roles uh, within our Wikimedia community user group and of course also within Africa. I'm so excited that I was selected uh, to be able to be among us the people who will be organizing the Wiki Vibrance uh, campaign this year. Amazing. So meaning uh, the energy that I actually have right now to be able to take on a couple of roles really, really just something that I, I built up, like I can say, an esteem, you know, a personal Wikimedia esteem. I can call it the Wiki esteem, you know, within this. And um, I'm super excited that this is going to help improve my uh, my community, which it's already doing. And of course, making um, will continue making a meaningful impact uh, for my community in South Sudan uh, via these skills. Otherwise, uh, thank you so much. I remember Romeo. And last but not least, uh, we have uh, Bukolo. Um, sorry, the the videos were a little bit too big in the slides. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Bukola. Hi everyone, I'm Bukola James. I'm a non practicing librarian and a certified content campaign organizer, as well as the community coordinator for Code for Africa Wikimedia and Residence Initiative. Um, my involvement with Wikipedia spanned from being a certified trainer for the Reading Wikipedia in the classroom to founding the uh, Wikipedia fan club at Square State University. And I also currently serve as an advisor to the Wikipedia Plus Education User Group, as well as the Regional Licensing Officer for Sub-Saharan Africa on the Let's Connect team. I enrolled in the Organizers Lab to deepen my graphs on designing topics of impact and uh, particularly those addressing climate change and sustainability gaps. I was further motivated by the program as it promises to help organizers like me connect with campaign runners globally and uh, also providing the opportunity to assess a special fund to support impactful uh, projects. 
Uh, my key takeaway will be that the lab taught me the intricacies of crafting campaigns addressing topics of impact like climate and sustainability issues. It also connected me with a global community of like-minded individuals who are passionate about organizing around these crucial topics. And now, apart from the network that it has created for me, it also provided me with mentorship mentorship on learning on wiki and off wiki skills and this had uh, oh, this led to the birth of the wiki climate campus stone nigeria 2023 project uh, which is a collective project of um, different campaign organizers to engage nigerian students in open climate movements and building sustainable wikimedia fan club communities in nigeria uh, but beyond techni techniques and strategies a golden lesson stood out and uh, which is collaboration is power so by partnering with other organizers and mentors from across the world we amplified our collective impact which is a testament to the idea that together with shared objective, we can forge ahead in tackling the mammoth challenges of climate change and sustainability and other topics of impact. And on a personal note, the organizers lab has revolutionized my journey with Wikimedia. Beyond the technical skills, it introduced me to a global network of peers and mentors with the resources, supports, and funding opportunities provided, I feel empowered to take on bigger projects and initiatives. The lab has positioned me to situate my projects within global and regional campaigns in 2023, making my contribution more aligned with broader sustainability objective. Thank you. So if you want to learn more uh, about the projects that were funded from the course and some of the graduates, uh, you can, we have a blog post that's in the slide deck. Um, and I shared the slide deck in the, in the chat. Um, and it's available online. And we'll, we'll make sure it's circulated uh, initially as well. Um, and Felix, did you want to comment a little bit more about the, the blog? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, in this blog, we basically are talking about um, the cohort, the make of the cohort, um, what participants viewed as most useful from the co uh, from their course, and also highlighting the um, grantees, um, those that were selected to receive grants to run their programs. And so I'd, 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 I'd suggest to you or encourage you to read this blog to learn more about their projects and to learn about the impact that this program created. Next slide. Yeah, I think this is you, Alex. <laughs> yeah, so we decided that the first tour is pretty promising and we still, uh, we, we're still learning a lot about how we teach and share this content. And so we're going to run a second cohort of the course. Um, this time it's going to have two different topics. It's not gender and climate plus each other, but gender or climate change or both. Um, where we know the movement's interest in the gender gap has always been a topic for impact focus. Um, and we think that the lab can be applied to any topic for impact. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be changing the course just a little bit, not too much. Um, you saw the outline of the course earlier, and I can go back to it if we want uh, during the Q&A session. Um, but we're going to be modifying the course so that the first couple sections, the first three units, can actually, uh, so we're still going to teach it in a cohort of about uh, uh, 40 to 50 people. So we're going to accept more people in the course this cycle. Um, uh, we, we, our idea is we want those chapters, those units to be self-taught content on the WikiLearn platform, something that someone can pick up and teach themselves. 
Um, also, by adding gender, we want to figure out how to teach other topics for impact feats besides climate. Climate's one that I happen to have developed some expertise on, so I, I kind of knew how to fit it into the content as we were developing it. Um, but we really want to be able to allow different parts of the movement to highlight different topics for impact and be able to offer the uh, cohorts of the organizer lab, or at least some parts of the material. And additionally, we're going to try uh, pilot the translation functions on the learn platform and teach a dual language cohort uh, together. Um, so we're gonna, uh, uh, yeah. So the the we're hoping to, or we're not hoping, we're planning on introducing a Spanish language uh, track in addition to English. Um, the choice for Spanish is both a combination of we know that gender and climate are important topics in Latin America. Um, and there's a growing community around it, but also all of our instructors this cycle um, speak Spanish uh, to me being the least uh, the least strong presenter of Spanish, but uh, other two are, are fluent. Um, and so we we know we can support the learners in those in that language. Yeah, so yay to add in one more topical area, gender. And also, yay to add in a new language to um, the course. We're very excited to add gender uh, as a topical area um, for the program. Also very much excited about adding Spanish. Um, our target is still going to be um, English and Spanish and also focusing on SSA regions, but Spanish from Spain, from I would say just anybody who speaks Spanish is invited to apply for this course, basically. So yeah, we're very excited. As you can see, I'm smiling a lot because I'm very excited about this addition. <laughs> cool. So yeah, in this particular round, uh, which we're about to launch, like Alex said, we, we are opening it up to have more people because we have the capacity to take in more people this year. And um, we are hoping that right after wikimania in the week of uh, like 23rd to 25th we can actually open out the call for applications and so please keep watching our meta pages for updates and we will be sending um an email to that effect on wikimedia l for those who want to participate in the second iteration of the course and um follow procedures in those announcements to sign up for the course if for some reason you're unable to do something and you really want our feedback you could send an email to campaigns at wikimedia.org or you can ping me and i will answer you directly i think this brings us to the end of our presentation in the next session like alex did mention in the beginning we'd like to workshop or have a workshop thingy thing with you uh basically just talking about um some of these um question areas that we put on here um and hearing your point of view so we can make the second iteration even way better for you over to you alex yeah so we have three broad questions um we'll be watching both the etherpad and event yay or uh we invite the facilitators in the room to pass around the mic um, we want to hear from you. Uh, I'm going to be taking notes in the etherpad. Um, but what kinds of topics for impact would you like to see training a focus on throughout the movement? Uh, one of the reasons we do topic focused training uh, for the lab is we think talking to people who are working on similar topics, uh, you learn more than if people are working on very different ones. Um, do these skills sound interesting? Uh, do you want them shared? If you had access to this content as kind of self-taught content or something you could deploy in your community, would you use it? Um, let us know. But also, just do you have any questions about the lab? Is there anything we can clarify? Um, so I'm watching the chat on event yay. Uh, but if the facilitator in the room uh, could uh, check if there's any questions in the room too, that would be great. Yeah. So, any question for the speakers? Yeah. One question from the room already. Oh, cool. Uh, hi, Alex. Please introduce yourself. 
Yes, yeah. Mike Dickerson here. I had to drop out of the organizer lab because of the mostly the time zone issue. The mandatory meetings mm -hmm. are all at 5 a.m. in New Zealand times. Uh, probably more yeah. inconvenient, especially for the ECAP region. Um, since most people live in the ECAP region, uh, I'm hoping that there'll be a future iteration of this that's actually not in a European or American time zone for a change. Uh, climate change obviously is a pretty big issue here too. Uh, it's nice to see the yeah. move towards self-taught content though, that's going to help things a lot. Yeah, so this next cycle is still going to be an intensive like we did the last time. Um, and because we're still like refining and tweaking the content. But um, a as I said, the first three units will be moved to self-taught content as well on WikiLearn where people can take it. And then our idea, our theory, is that we would be able to offer more cycles of the organizer lab that are more uh, kind of equitable and diverse and rotating around the globe and around topics um, in the future where we don't have to have someone like participating in the course for two, three months, which is a lot of time, especially if you're a Wikimedia volunteer, but rather you can take the self-taught content and then join us for a month where we workshop and are creative on ideas. I know this has taken a while. Um, online writing, online learning content is kind of it's complicated, and making sure it's translatable and kind of flexible at an international level um, is has been kind of interesting. We're learning a lot about how to do this. Um, but yes, the idea would be that we would offer it more. Um, again, Spanish and English uh, doesn't isn't as inclusive uh, for the, the that part of the world. So I, I I'm also acknowledging we haven't made that that effort yet, but we start where we can. Does that answer your question? Yeah, moving to the next question from the room now. Uh -huh. Hi there, um, my name is Izzy, I'm from the United States. Thank you so much for the presentation. I was wondering if you could clarify the level of experience or just the amount of time, um, sort of on average, the attendees for the last cycle were for their involvement in the movement before joining the Organizer Lab? Yeah, so we were targeting people, so there was a floor, there was a minimum required amount of skill, which is you run at least one community event and you had at least, uh, I can't remember how many edits. So it was a certain number of edits. Um, we used this floor to screen out people who um, hadn't yet experimented within the movement, like the kinds of things that we know other parts of the movement uh, uh, can train on, right? Like running your first editathon is something that like other groups are very good at, at training, like art and feminism, for instance. Um, so we weren't focused on that. Um, and then we, what we did is we kind of looked at the distribution of participants uh, that could be in the course, and we uh, tried to make kind of an equitable balance uh, focus with the most of the cohort being in that medium experience range, which is they run more than one or three or something more often more than five events. Um, and they, they've been around the movement for several years, but we weren't targeting folks uh, like you, Mike, uh, who has many years of organizing, um, even though we did have a handful of people in the cohort who, who were like that, because we did want to see like who benefited the most. Um, and Felix, uh, based on kind of what you've seen so far, I, I think the, the medium experienced people were the folks who seemed to most benefit from the curriculum too, right? Yeah, so um, we did see some newbies actually like uh, Romeo really upscale themselves, but most of the people that benefited a lot were the medium experience editors, those that had done some local events and were keenly interested in upskilling themselves to do something more global. Yeah. Any other question from the room? No. I mean, also feel free to um, 
help us answer some of the questions that we have on here on the ether yeah. if you can or um just feel free to speak in the room have uh, eight minutes left, so any other questions, comments, any thoughts? If not, probably I can give it back to speakers if there is any wrap-up. Okay, so I think when you're in a room like this and there's no comments, it's either you did well or it was terrible. <laughs> I, 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 I. I, I, I'm. It's almost midnight for me, so it, it could be that I was that we were terrible. For this. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if there isn't any more questions in the room, I'd like to say thank you for making the time to join the organizer organizer lab. No, before we wrap up, Alex, do you have any last words on um, anything that people should know for the second iteration V two? I might see a thing or two, so just passing it to you now. Yeah, um, just that, you know, we, we're, we're still testing this, um, and our goal is really to have something scalable and reusable. And as we saw throughout, through folks like Romeo and Cola and Tochi, and um, there, there are a handful of other folks who've reported that they, like, reuse uh, some of the teaching material for the course. So the idea is we... We really want to open source, kind of open access as much of this as possible for people to reuse. Um, the only reason we haven't published it is like a choose your own adventure course yet is that we're we're learning how to to kind of refine the content and some of the things didn't work as well as we thought it, they would. Like one of the assignments just was not very good the first time. Um, and so, yep, that that's why we'll hopefully be publishing stuff in them. About six to eight months, we'll you'll start seeing some of the self-taught content. Cool. Yeah, to also wrap up, I'd like to say that some of the things that we presented, especially the stats, as you would see, was not very extensive. This is because we're still um evaluating the first situation of the cohorts um, of the course that actually happened. And so we will be given an extensive um feedback in months to come. There would be a publication on DIFF um, explaining the impact of the course. And so we are very much excited and keenly looking forward to that. And we are encouraging you to ask questions. If you have feedback for us, reach us at campaigns at wikimedia.org. Um, please feel free to also apply for the course, course to test. If you are a staff of an affiliate, it could be an opportunity to see how we run this course, uh, try to invite people from your communities to, to join us. We're very, very excited as you can. I am very excited actually <laughs> to run this course again. And I can't wait for us to open the course for people to join in. So yeah, thank you all for joining us in the room. Very excited um, for some of the questions that came in, but also very much excited for the questions that will come. Uh, Etherpad is still open, so please feel free to engage. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Felix. So before we leave, there is uh, one more comment from the room. Nice. Hello, Great everyone. Lessons. My name is Alana, um, and I also work on campaigns in the foundation, but more from the software tooling side. So since this is wrapping up, I thought I'd just quickly plug, if anyone's free at lunchtime, we're going to have a meetup in room 310 to talk about the software side. So what's working for you? What is really not working for you that you would like improved? We really want to hear from all of you. So join us in 310 at 1315 if you would like to be part of that. Thank you. Yeah, and that reminds me, Elena, thank you so much for speaking up in the room. So our team works closely with Elena's team. Uh, we are the campaigns program team and they are the campaigns product team. Uh, a lot of the work they do was actually influenced by research that was done by Alex Stinson, um, my colleague right here, the organizers, um, <clears throat> organizers research, and um, also some sort of internal research that came up. This team is actually working closely with us to build tools that help organizers to do their work more effectively in the movement. I think last year they launched their event um, 
registration tool, which is a tool that is um, live that you can test uh, for registration purposes um, in, in, in your events. I think currently we're using ad hoc ways. People are registering for events on Google Forms and Eventbrite and stuff like that. We want to have our own wiki kind of registration. So that tool was built and I think it's live. You can test it out. And I think this time around they're looking um are doing something more around event discovery so please join them please 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 do join them to listen to what they have for you and i will be there actually um to um um help share more on, on what they're doing i think it's amazing uh that the foundation is now beginning to develop um a lot for the organizers and supporting the organizing movement in the past it's been just some volunteer developers building tools to help Organize this, but this time around, we have a whole team for that. Okay. Yeah, I, I hope you guys join that. And we're going to have a reflection on the Wiki for Human Rights campaign in about uh, uh, seven hours, six hours as well, um, uh, which is the, the more programmatic side of this training, uh, or not training, but of, of topics for impact work we're doing. Um, it's it's the one topic current head campaign we support. Um, so if you join us later, we'll we'll I'll also be sharing from there. So see you then.